we shall see a revelation of a certain dimension of Bhagwan's work, the divine work, the tremendous work that he called his father's work, a revelation by himself. He never talked about it much except that he was doing his father's work and his father was satisfied with his work. One day at Sanadi Street house, a devotee by name Radha Krishna had come from Singapore Marcoville. He was there at the house at 10 o'clock and Bhagwan was inside the house. He came and opened the door and called him in. When Radha Krishna went inside, there was already a devotee seated there who was the retired commissioner of Madurai Corporation. From 10 o'clock, Swami was talking to him. Both of them were talking to each other. Many, many topics on spirituality, topics on divinity and the world. So they were talking, talking, talking for hours and it was six o'clock, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, six, six p.m. evening. Radha Krishna felt the pinch of hunger. He had had just a cup of coffee in the morning. Usually whenever he came, Bhagawan would ask him, have you taken anything? All right, now you go, have something and come. But today there was no such talk at all. Bhagwan was busy talking whatever he wanted to say for hours. At six o'clock, when Radha Krishna no more could put up with that and was thinking very intensely, there was a knock at the door. Swami asked Radha Krishna to go and see. One Sri Ganeshan, who was the postmaster at the time of the savings division of post office, Thiruvannamalai, he entered, Swami called him inside. He was already a devotee, he was chanting Bhagavan's Nama. He used to come to Bhagavan. So as soon as this devotee came inside, Swami said, Ganesha, will you go to Udupi Hotel and bring four packets, each of three chapatis? But one condition, do not bring the chutney or sambar with that. And again he made sure that Sri Ganesha, Ganesha Sadma, understood that. And then of course, after some time he returned from the hotel. He put those packets, just as he said. He wanted four packets. There were three people already. And then Sri Ganesha Sharma had entered, so four packets of chapatis, that was fine. But along with that, he kept the vessel containing samba and chutney. One look at it, Swami became Rudra. Swami got terribly angry. He said, what have you done? This beggar told you not to bring this. Don't you understand? that you should do only what this beggar says strictly. Why have you done this? Poor Ganesh Sharma, he could not say anything. Probably those people in the hotel compelled him to take this. He kept quiet, apologetically. He was looking on with folded hands. And then Swami said, okay, you take all these packets now, this beggar will not touch them. Now you take all this back, go give it there. This beggar's calculations have gone wrong. This beggar's account, even there in the hotel, is over. 
when he said it so angrily, of course, they had to take it. And then he came back, he informed those people there in the hotel that Swami was very angry because this was added to that. And then Swami said that the account with the hotel was over. Unfortunately, when this thing happened, the proprietor, Sri Ramchandra Upadhyaya, a great devotion towards Bhagavan, was been moving with him closely for years, been giving him food for a number of years, even from their house, as per Bhagavan's instruction, they were supplying food. He was not there in the hotel when this happened. He felt terrible when Bhagwan had sent word like this. He came to know about it only after he returned, so he came at ten o'clock in the night. So in the meantime, after Ganesh Sharma deposited everything back in the hotel and came back, Swami dropped a fruit or two as prasad to the commissioner and Sri Ganesh Sharma and sent them immediately, sent them all. And to Radha Krishna he gave some fried channa, the grains, and then uh, this uh, dry gooseberry. Poor Radha Krishna, he had to be happy with that because there was no thought of food at all in him now. He's seeing Swami in that angry mood. Ten o'clock, Sri Ramchandra Upadhyaya came inside because Swami permitted him to come in. He prostrated before Bhagwan and with folded hands, he was very agitated. He said, Swami, this has happened. When, my, when I was not present there, when I had gone out, some misguided people had done this to you. I am very sorry about it, I am very upset. Please don't say your account is over there. Of course, then Swami smiled and blessing him, Swami said, it happens like this. Sometimes when I come there to the hotel, one of those people serve us. This beggar didn't want, wouldn't want any sweet, but then they would come and deliberately put some sweet there. So that was okay. But people, you people may think that this beggar is getting angry for nothing. This is a very simple matter, a small thing. Why should Swami get angry? He is a saint. He is not supposed to get angry. Whereas this Swami is getting angry for nothing. You people do not understand. This beggar is connected with the whole cosmos in entirety, the entire cosmos is totally connected with this beggar. Every look of this beggar, every word he utters, every gesture he makes, every step that he takes is connected with this whole cosmos. If this beggar's will goes wrong, this beggar's calculation goes wrong, there will be repercussions on the cosmic level. And to set it right, this beggar has to go through further suffering. You people do not know what is involved. Whatever this beggar does is not the same as you are doing. He made it very clear is a cosmic being and that every gesture of his, every thought, every word, every action of his controlled by the Divine. Just imagine he was the walking cosmos, the divinity, who carried the whole cosmos on his being. And we ignorant people, 
we do not know how much suffering we had caused him with our careless, thoughtless behavior. But then what could we do? Even that ignorance has been put in us by the same Divine. So Swami always understood and forgave. What else could He do? But imagine all the sufferings He must have gone through when people beat Him up, when people threw stones at Him, when people abused Him in many ways. Now that Bhagwan putting up with a whole lot and out of compassion kept blessing and blessing and blessing. He's still blessing us now here in front of us in the form of His murti with His hand raised in benediction permanently. All that He wants from us is remembrance of God, for which sake this body is given to us, this life is given to us. Why would God give us this body and this life? Only to remember Him. Remembrance of God is the sole purpose of life. Everything else is only to push us towards that. So let's pray to Bhagavan. Bhagavan, we are